I've sunk an enemy destroyer. Hey team, is Ripper here. We guys are doing fantastic today. We got a fun video with the Kabarovs because somebody asked me to take a look at it and see if it's worth it in today's meta of 2024. Uh, as always, before we begin, like, subscribe button below. If you want to support the channel and uh, really appreciate all the support uh, and you, want, you like what we're doing here, go ahead and check out those buttons at the bottom there and uh, help us out. Uh, help the algorithm out, help us getting the word across and always building a great community, having fun and learning something at the same time. So let's get right to it. What is the Kabaros? It's tier 10 premium in the armory for coal and it is pretty darn awesome. Uh, while we're sailing to the objective here, I'm playing with another uh, div clan mate here. It's pretty awesome. Uh, especially when you're paired up with a Smallin or a Marceau or something. Dude, the Kabaros, I'm telling you right now, TLDR, this thing is a juggernaut, run and gun kind of style of game, gunboat and this is exactly what it um, I really like doing and uh, it, it literally is probably I would have to label this ship as one of the most annoying Destroyers to play against and then when you are playing it you are the annoying person So if you enjoy being the annoying person, this is the ship for you So I'll go ahead and right off the bat. Um, just look at the, uh, the FDG right here Fetter to gross. I mean you are literally uh, gonna see this thing melt uh, and, and it's just me uh, me and maybe one other person And I'm just literally causing a ruckus and for the FDG I'm sorry because this is probably the most annoying thing you're gonna see when you're playing against first of all You're getting started lit by fires all the time from this thing. It's got four sets of guns 400 and uh, I believe these are 130 30 millimeter guns which are devastating they only pin about 22 millimeters but that's more than enough for what you need to do and the bread and butter of the cabros is what you're seeing right here is literally just non-stop gun boating and the throttle juke is insane i don't know what it is the acceleration time on this thing on the stat sheets is 8.9 seconds right zero to uh, full speed 8.9 seconds but it's this thing can stop on a dime even with the engine bur uh, boost that you see activated here that is the watch this so you're gonna see so many clips and shots and the situations where I'm just juking shells or just the throttle and look it, it, even if you hit me it, I still got the hell the heels is the super heels as you can see right there and you're just reliving this ship back to life like a zombie and there's nothing you can do about it I mean it's so annoying to play against and that's again I can just sum it up I would call this the annoying destroyer that literally just runs and guns like a Zorky as well Zorky is just the super ship version is now look what he fires and look where the shells are going they are going far behind me and receiving no damage you're going to see a lot of that going on and even the torpedo boats they think you're going one direction and then you're going another and they're just going to torp the whole area and you have plenty of time to really just spot these shima torps or, or whatever they are and you can avoid and dodge and like crazy and look this fdg is not having a good day at all and i'm i mean one you're being a great destroyer you're literally distracting you're the wild visa mission that i've always said in vietnam where you're just trying to get the enemy to lock on fire on you waste their shot Remember, a battleship can only take so many shots in a game that lasts only 20 minutes max, right? If they take that shot, they got a 30 to 25 second reload. They can only do so much. Look at this. Yamagiri just desperation burst fires. Let's see where he's hidden. Yeah, even if he scratches the paint, there's 50 mil armor plating all over my, my hull and everything, except for the front section. So this thing is the juggernaut. I'm telling you, you try to shoot at this thing, this thing just doesn't want to die. And, and it's labeled itself as the most annoying zombie ship out there to play against. And I understand why Kabarovsk um, players like that. And, and that's kind of style of gameplay. But uh, as we're sailing around, take a look. At, let's take a look about the history of this thing a little bit. And uh, you'll understand where we're coming from. We'll talk about some of the strengths and the weaknesses of it. The, Kabar the Kabarovsk is the epitome of the running and gunning method of Soviet destroyer leaders. First introduced as a tier five with the Podovyoski. First, the running. Kabarovs enjoys a top speed of 43 knots already, even with the speed flight get up to about 44, 45. While outclassed by the uh, French counterpart Kleber, it's still very remarkable and excellent for a gunboat. Adding the bonuses provided by the Sierra uh, mic flag and engine boost consumable, this thing can reach up to 49 knots, making itself a frustrating keyword there. Frustrating target to hit at range. Kabarovs also has the benefit from a very powerful engine and great acceleration. So they're, they're, they're right there just talking about that alone is already explaining to you why this is so annoying. It can just juke like cr crazy with just the throttle. Uh, that the ship is, uh, what's here? Well, very fast in a straight line. The ship, the, uh, unfortunately, while very fast in a straight line, the ship is sores, uh, sorely lacking in agility and her turning radius. Again, another 
terrible thing is the turning radius turning radius is so large up to like 800 to 900 or something like that and a rudder shift is downright atrocious meaning upgrades to improve it are all but mandatory to make cabarets wiggly enough to dodge incoming fire especially from high velocity guns which are in abundance of uh, tier 8 and above also while she can run she cannot hide cabarets has the poorest concealment of all destroyers currently available more warships and making it extremely easy to spot especially if attempting to contest caps like we're doing right here next to gunning she fires the same shells as tashin at the same rate of fire per barrel however she gains a fourth turret as well as slightly higher muzzle velocity which is i really love fast firing easy arcing guns which are awesome unfortunately while her firepower is impressive her gun range is sorely lacking and needs ease every available upgrade to keep cabros at a comfortable range from its targets while she does not have the range of mutability of the test and she shares similar advantage with very large health pool destroyers access to specialized repair teams and consumables and you can see me hitting that islander i just could not turn this dang thing it was so hard my buddy's uh, using the radar so i had to help him out most of all, however, the Cabaros is most heavy armor destroyer, currently available to players with 25mm thick deck armor and 50mm thick midsection. The chest plate can shatter most cruiser HE shells and at extreme angles even bounce battleship AP shells. So pretty, pretty darn. Here we go, taking on the Z42 again. Uh, very, very overpowered right here when you have a small one going to radar uh, right here and able to just look and boom, blind firing in the smoke and the guns are so accurate you can do that really, really well. Giving us that first splash one kill for the day. Now we're going to set and focus our eyesights on the Yamagiri, see if we can get as much fire power on him. Look at that battleship shells firing at us right now. And the battleship is just so desperate. They're going to literally lock us on with their secondaries. And literally all his attention is to focus on me rather than another Hanover or Minnesota. We're doing our job as a destroyer. We're being a distracting, distracting, annoying pest. And that's a bread and butter of this thing. Now notice that the secondaries, remember the computer is trying to aim lead you. But if you slam on the brakes, it's really, really good acceleration. Look at these shells. They go right in front of us right there. That's his primary battery shot. Now he's got to wait a long time. And now look at his secondaries are adjusting fire for where you think they think my velocity and vector is going to be. And then again, you throttle juke again, go forward. And you notice the secondary shells are now going to the back. So that is a great tip for uh, you destroyer players that really want to dodge these really high accurate um, the uh, secondary battleships that have these really good accuracy on the guns. You just got to throttle juke back and forth. Again, throttle juke right there. He misses again. Notice that we're at 1.2 million potential damage at the top right screen there. Look at that. 1.37 in the matter of just a few minutes right there we are literally soaking up literally what battleship potential damage is right there so that is the power of the zombie cabros it is insane and annoying to play against i'm sorry for that now again another dead battleship because this thing literally draws fire like a madman and literally because you're drawing that attention and fire you're leaving your friends your teammates free to fire at will having a nice enjoyable day dropping their ordnance and destroying the the uh, red team right there like okay, last thing we lift off, left off was the 25 millimeter thick deck and the 50 millimeter thick mid sections. These chest plates can shatter those shells, like we talked about. Uh, optimal angling will depend on enemy guns and their shell selection. Cabras will only take full penetration damage from AP and sap shells of 280 millimeters and below. Her AA is fairly decent for her to destroy and can shoot down a few planes, but is no way enough to deter the plane strikes. Uh, let's see here, especially considering the lack of that defensive fire able consumable. That being said, this thickly armored mid section of the ship can withstand some punishment from plane strikes without losing too much health, provided the player actively attempts to dodge plane strikes as well. Torpedoes are a most, a, uh, mostly a situational cur uh, curiosity with a six kilometer range where they are crap, and they will see little to yo no use in a gunboat game. They are very, very slow, 53 knots, and you can spot them from a mile away. However, they do have one special feature. Uh, the detection radius is amazing, 0.6 kilometers away. Uh, I mean, that's good. 0.6 kilometers is awesome, but 6 kilometer range, terrible, and plus everybody's running hydro these days, so I say you still spot these things and they're slow. So I still think you can spot these things from a mile away uh, with everything going on. Uh, let's see here. No other thing to do. Damage is respect respectable, making them potentially le lethal to ambushes. So, like I said, what do we just talk about there? So, just basically, we summarize all the pros and cons of this ship. Very fast, great juking, heavy armor, heavy health pool, great acceleration, great maneuverability. I'm sorry, I guess you could say dodging maneuverability, not not left and right turn. You got to have those upgrades, which at the end of the video, you're going to see me actually work on the... I, I took the upgrade for uh, steering, so that thing, or later on, I actually did it. In this video, I didn't, but I would recommend in putting, in, instead of... Um, uh, acceleration uh, i would recommend putting uh the uh, steering uh, ability in there now i don't have legendary mod on this thing legendary mod if you put in slot five you actually sacrifice concealment which gets it up to about 8.77 ish so about eight they round up into wargaming i think so you get about 8.8 .8 concealment which is terrible even worse than Claber. so i don't know i, I don't think i want to run the the legendary mod because i would rather and boom there it is splash two right there the accuracy of these guns is incredible Long, firing at range so i really enjoy that really and look at the z42 look at the, the shell arcs right here 
I mean, you can literally hit this thing from 11.7 to 12 miles, no issues. I had no problems there. So the biggest thing, uh, again, I would use to uh, build the Kabaroffs is really for steering. Uh, I would not take Legendary Mod right now. I don't think that, because the Legendary Mod, like we were talking about, it, it sacrifices concealment, which means instead of what you're seeing right now, 7.9, I would probably get it about 8.8. .8. You're going to get spotted from the moon anyways, because you're constantly running and gun and gunboating, as you can see what I'm doing right here. But you're going to get detected immediately fast, especially with these destroyers with 5.6 concealment or 6. So you're going to be spotted the whole time from the moon. It's really difficult to do anything. So I don't know if I want to, if the sacrificing the concealment for about a 6% addition to the reload, it was what, look, look at my reload right now. It's three point six. So if I do quick math right here, three point six times uh, an extra ten or six percent, so times point nine four, you're getting about three point four seconds. So instead of three point six, I get three point four. Is that point two percent of reload really gonna help me at all in the game, as opposed to a seven point nine consumer, as opposed to eight point eight consumer spotted from the moon? I don't know. I'll leave that up to you. For me, I don't feel comfortable in that sense. I, for, As a good destroyer player, I want to have at least as much concealment as I would like to get away with. And I know I'm running gun with the Kabaros, but at least let me push in and do something else rather than just shooting ships and running around or being spotted the whole time. Because someone could literally, uh, if I had 8.8 .8 concealment, Ashima could just literally trail me the whole time and just spot me. And that's really, really annoying. So I would at least like to have a 7.9 have the best that you can get on this thing as opposed to legendary mod now if you guys have out there have a legendary and you like it go for it i mean that's awesome i don't know how to work it yet because it let's i could honestly easily give up uh, concealment with commander build and just go well let's go let's take a look at uh, how i can run this thing at 8.8 .8. and i've tried with club bear and with the, and zorky 8.8 .8 concealments they are difficult nowadays with radar uh, the Shimas, the Jaegers now with like five point what four or two five concealment, ridiculous concealments, and submarines. Don't get me started on submarines. I think it's really really difficult to even do anything with any that like kind of a lighthouse build. But anyways, here's a Ragnar right here. Again, we're spotted from the moon anyways, but it don't it doesn't matter because we're just gonna literally slam on the brakes, juke the shells, and I'm just gonna use sheer aiming at this point and see if I can knock out a Ragnar. Now his shells still hurt me a little bit. They can do a lot of damage, but that filthy meal armor playing is really awesome. If he can hit me in the superstructure, I'm done. And boom, splash three. He goes down. Taking out another uh, destroyer player, and again, Kabaroffs is a powerful, uh, powerful, uh, I would say, equipment to fight against destroyers. So, man, I, if I was a smaller destroyer, I would. I don't know if I would want to pick a fight with Kabaroffs because every time I see Kabaroffs, I run away unless I'm in a Druid or something heavier, uh, or even a Marceau. Baby, I mean, a Marceau could take on a Kabaroffs. I think it'd be okay. But anything else, man, this thing is a bully. It's a juggernaut. It's literally the zombie that literally comes back at you, laughs at you when you shoot at it, and it comes back for more, and it literally is just popping heels with a specialized repair. So this thing is like the Lucian's, kind of like that Grozovoy, kind of like that Kabarov style gameplay. Like I'm talking about, it's a zombie ship gameplay, which is so annoying to play against, and uh, that's how it's so powerful about it. So uh, again, what are my what are the things I like about it? Really, the heavy gun power, the heavy health pool, the super heals, the great juke and acceleration abilities. Um, the, the downsides is the concealment's poor, the maneuverability is poor, and um, spotted from the moon and so forth. But man, this thing is a powerhouse, and I really, really do enjoy it. I don't know if I would take the legendary mod as like we talked about, and do I get the skill? Oh, I barely got it. Anyways, it can take on cruisers, take on battleships, and takes on everything. So build a be at the end of the screen. Let me know in the comments below what you think of the Kabaroffs today in the 2024. Had an awesome game right there. Over 147,000 damage. Three kills right there, and we absorb Dreadnought. Of course, guess what? We're receiving the amount of damage of 120% of at least your ship's base AP, HP from four more enemies. And you are literally absorbing the onslaught of the enemy, and that is your job. Look at that, number one in the team, and doing the most of the, the, the firepower damage right there. And look at this. We did... 95,000 damage with the guns, 52% on fires alone. So really, really awesome right there. Yamaguri, Ragnar, Z42, taking out all the destroyers right there on our side of the map. And it is incredible, incredible. Look at the potential damage. 1.884735. That is a lot for a destroyer to be taken right there. And you can just tell, and it spots very well. So I'm telling you, the Kabaroffs, man, in 2024, just it still can survive. It does what it needs to do. It is a literally juggernaut powerhouse punching bag that goes out there, gets the enemy to spot and look for you. And it's uh, it's really, really powerful. So take a look at the build at the end of the screen. Um, yeah, I hope you enjoy it. Let me know in the comments below what you think of the Kabaroffs. Is it worth it to get in the armory for coal today? And as always, if you see me out there, say hi. And you guys take care. We'll talk to you soon. Cheers.